Hey, what's up? I'm Liz, the Split Save DIY, and today we're going to be talking about the NVIDIA Jetson Nano. Uh, so you may have heard about this uh, board a little bit, uh, shrouded in the mystery of the catch-all terms of AI and machine learning and all that fun stuff. Um, I didn't really know much about it, and NVIDIA uh, did reach out to me and send me this board to take a look at and, you know, work with a bit. And I agreed to mainly because I'm curious about what is happening here. Uh, so let's first start out with how NVIDIA describes this board. So NVIDIA describes the Jetson Nano as an AI computer uh, designed to be used by makers, developers, and students to make AI more accessible. Uh, so I, they're basically, I think, trying to make what the Arduino was for microcontrollers and coding and electronics. Um, they want to make the Jetson like that for AI and those new technologies that are starting to become more popular. And you may look at this and think single board computer because that's become kind of the catch-all term for all those Linux-based boards out there. But this really is a more of a computer rather than a single board computer because although we have the board, the majority of the components and tech is on the so dim slot that slots in. And uh, we'll talk about the components and everything uh, a little bit later in the video when we talk about the hardware and what's uh, what's going on on board here. And we also see a lot of like traditional PC desktop things on here as well, uh, which makes sense because if you're a PC enthusiast, you know NVIDIA as the GPU company, the graphics card company. Get those mad frame rates, bro. Before we go too deep though, I think we need to talk about some details and kind of talk about the technology on a higher level just to define some terms. AI is this term that gets thrown around a lot um, without really getting defined, especially by corporate tech. It's kind of used as this thing to define the future. What AI is, first of all, is an acronym for artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence in the most basic terms, and we're not going to go too deep on this, we want to just have a a level playing field so that we can approach this uh, appropriately. Artificial intelligence basically is the idea that computers will demonstrate these uh, human traits uh, as far as learning and knowledge and then taking this knowledge and applying it in situations much as we do. We learn the concept that a red light means stop. So that means when we're driving, when we come to a red light, we stop our car, I hope. And then on another level, you could teach a computer what a bird is. And then you could show the computer different pictures of different animals, including some birds. And the computer, in theory, by knowing what a bird is, would be able to look at these pictures and pick out all the birds. It doesn't like bird watching. And it would be able to identify the birds based on the traits about birds that it has learned. Now, the reason why I'm using air quotes on learned is computers aren't actually learning. They don't have brains like humans or other living things. At the end of the day, all AI is trained on human-made algorithms. The process of training computers on algorithms is called machine learning, or ML, which is another term that gets thrown around a whole bunch. These algorithms are just mathematical models that are run, and then the results of them are saved, and that is how the computer learns. Uh, these results are saved in code stacks, different programs, and then when those are run, that's how the computer is able to apply the learning. Now, these models and algorithms, as I said, are, of course, written by people. And that leads us to the concerns that um, looms in the future of AI and what it all really means and how we can all get real existential real quick. An algorithm is basically someone else's bias. Essentially how that person defines the parameters that they are training that computer to recognize. Ask yourself what you think of when you picture a bird. It might vary depending on where you live. If you live in like the rural northeastern United States, you might think of owls, you might think of like cardinals. If you live in a more tropical location, you might see more tropical birds. And even there, I wasn't able to name tropical birds because I'm from the northeastern United States. And now I want you to take a moment and picture a doctor. Who would be a doctor in your mind? And then I want you to picture a family. How would you picture a family in your mind? Uh, basically, I want you to dig deep and think about what your personal biases are. And then think about how if someone with your biases or different biases was writing AI, what would that mean? If they aren't considering the fact that 
they need to explore past their biases and really take in all the possibilities out there and not rely on stereotypes or what they have been taught to be a, a norm. There are big questions right now as to who is writing these algorithms, who is programming them, who is training them, and not only that, but how is all of this data being used? Computers, by definition, do not have bias, but people do. And I think it's so important as we move forward to do everything we can to keep AI ethical and to use this technology responsibly. And if you can't tell, this is something that I'm personally concerned about, and I want to, as a result, understand it better. So that's why I'm going to look into the Jetson Nano and I'm going to try learning a bit about AI and how it works. And hopefully as I learn and document it in videos, you'll learn too. And we can take away some of the mystery around these terms that are kind of swimming around right now in technology. But now that we understand where we are a little better, I think we can talk about the Nano and the hardware that's going on here and just take a grand tour for specs. It has a 64-bit quad-core ARM A57 CPU clocked at 1.43 GHz. GPU is a 128-core NVIDIA Maxwell clocked at 921 MHz. There are 4 GB of DDR4 RAM on board clocked at 1600 MHz. And for I.O. we have 4 USB 3.0 HDMI DisplayPort, a 40-pin GPIO whose pinout matches the Raspberry Pis, so you can, you can use hats on this if you wanted to, although it might be a little awkward. Uh, micro USB or DC jack for power, both 5 volts, but we've got a 2 amp limit on the USB and 4 amp limit on the DC jack. This means that you can use your USB power supplies from Raspberry Pis on here, no problem. We got a MIPI CSI camera connection, which is the same ribbon cable uh, that Raspberry Pi uses for their camera modules, and you can use that with the NVIDIA Jetson Nano. Gigabit and Ethernet and an SD slot for running your OS. Does not have eMMC, but an SD card. And also it's got one of those really satisfying latches. I love those. So the footprint of the board is kind of this big square block. Uh, and as you can see, the majority of the hardware is on this SODIM module that is attached with uh, two headers here, and then it slots right in. And this heat sink basically covers that entire thing and it does get hot because you've got these big workloads running on it. Uh, now it does have a fan mount. You could use a small aftermarket fan and it will mount on there which is nice and then it does even have a four pin PWM fan header which if you, again if you're familiar with desktop computers then that will look familiar to you. So you can plug in one of these mini fans onto the header and then desktop style wrap the cable around, probably best to approach this way, and then mount your fan, and ta-da. Uh, Noctua fans are pretty quiet, that's what they're kind of known for. They're also known for having this really kind of ugly brown and tan color, as far as desktop computers go. And uh, you know, the 3D printing people might recognize this fan too, because the Prusa Mark III has a tiny Noctua fan for, um, I believe it's uh, the heat block cooling or part cooling. It's one of those. It's on there because it's quiet. So if you haven't been able to tell already, this is a very specialized board. It's designed to be like basically this little module that students and uh, enthusiasts can use for AI and machine learning workloads. So I don't think you should get this board if you're just trying to do like more intense game emulation or to run your Kodi box, especially at the $99 price point. I mean, you could. I'm not, I'm not going to stop you, and it might be kind of cool, but it, it is specialized hardware. It's for AI and machine learning, and part of what you're paying for is that software stack as well, and the access to that, uh, and just knowing that everything's going to work like that on here. Uh, so just want to throw that out there. This is not like a super duper powered, to use my least favorite term in hardware, Raspberry Pi killer. That's not what this is. We're talking apples and oranges here. This is an AI specialized board. So we've talked about the hardware uh, and we've talked about what, um, in a very broad terms, what AI is. So how do you use this thing? What's it like on the software side? Well, you might have guessed it's running Linux, specifically Ubuntu as far as the distribution goes. And similar to how Raspberry Pi packages Raspbian, uh, NVIDIA has packaged what's called the Jetpack SDK, which is its Ubuntu bundle that has a lot of stuff pre-configured so that everything will work swimmingly on the Jetson Nano. 
Uh, one thing I do want to note, if you're used to things like Raspbian and other um, Linux distros for those kind of boards, uh, the Jetpack SDK is significantly larger. It takes like 12 gigabytes. So if you're using like a 16 gig card, it won't leave you a lot of room. And actually how NVIDIA sent the, um, the Jetson out to me, it was actually with a 32 um, gigabyte card. Uh, so just wanted to throw that out there. You're going to need a little bit more storage than what you're used to. Now, once you're in there, uh, you'll probably again be like, okay, what do I do now? But don't worry. Uh, NVIDIA has this getting started uh, GitHub uh, page with um, their tutorial to run through uh, called Hello AI World. And similar to how hardware and software examples um, use Hello World to demonstrate really basic capabilities, that's exactly what Hello AI World is doing, but for AI. You basically install a pre-trained algorithm and then submit images to that algorithm that NVIDIA provides for you uh, to kind of get the gist of how it works and see if that picture can be recognized. So the tutorial is very well written. I found it to be really easy to follow along with and there are examples in both C and Python. So you don't have to fight over the language that you want to use. You can use whatever you want. However, though, I do recommend having experience in both Linux and your chosen coding language because I think someone coming in completely blind will get pretty lost. Mainly because the concept of what you're doing is pretty complex. You're trying to do this like AI stuff. So if you're compounding that with also not understanding Linux and not understanding programming and the language that you're using, you might have a hard time. You might get a little frustrated. The second part of the Hello AI World uh, tutorial shows you how to take your own set of images and train them with the algorithm, which is actually what I'm working on right now. And eventually you'll see the results of that project uh, that I'll do with the uh, Jetson Nano. I think it's gonna be pretty great. And uh, yeah, it involves cats. Before diving into the project though, I really felt like I needed to do an intro um, to introduce the concepts behind both the hardware and also these new technologies to try to take away some of the mystery and also give some context as to what exactly is going on. But let's go do it for this video. Uh, just a quick intro into the NVIDIA Jetson Nano. Uh, AI computer and also just very broad strokes. What is AI? I'll link the Hello AI World tutorial down in the description in case you want to take a look at it. Uh, I didn't want to go over it piece by piece because it, uh, I think it is very well documented and written. So I think you can kind of go over it at your leisure. And if you like this video, toss me a thumbs up, leave any questions or comments down below. Thank you for watching. Consider subscribing more content like this. We will be doing a small scale AI project with the NVIDIA Jetson Nano. And until next time, this has been Blitz City DIY.